Welcome to the Bible Show on EvolutionPop.com. I'm your host, Jeff Hudson. This is the Bible Show where we read the scripture directly from the Bible. It's not what your pastor said, not what your pastor wants you to hear, not what you want to hear, not what the common beliefs are, none of that stuff, but what does the Bible actually say? Today's lesson, Sodom, wicked before the Lord. Sodom, wicked before the Lord. Now, why am I doing this lesson? I don't know. I was driving down, I was driving somewhere and I was like, uh, went past the village of something and they've got like, you know, the state flag you know, state of Illinois flag, city flag, whatever village it was. And it had the rainbow flag for the LGBTQ. Now it's like, I was trying to think like, when has there ever been a movement or a push or whatever you want to call it, where municipalities are flying that movement's flag? I mean, do you see like a, would you see like a, I, I'm just going to use that as an example, a Black Lives Matters flag? flying at the Capitol in Chicago or something, or any, any municipality? Would you see a uh, Confederate flag? You probably will see a Confederate flag if you go down south. I think they've been trying to get rid of those, though, right? I'm just using that as an example. Like any kind of movement, would you see their flag there? So that made me think, let me do this lesson about, about Sodom. Now, this is going to be, let me start this off by saying, everybody can do whatever they want to do. The, okay, this is according to the Bible. All this is what I'm talking about is according to the Bible. So man's got his own rules. And if they conflict God's rules, which are in the Bible, then, you know, I'm going to read the lesson to you and say, hey, hey, this is what the Bible says versus what man says. You do what you want. Now, you call it from there. I'm going to try and follow what God says. And that's my point. So, and God says, that it tells the watchman, warn them from me. So we're supposed to be following God's inst instructions in the Bible. If man comes up with something that, that goes against that, then man's wrong, according to the Bible. So which one are you going to follow? So let's get into the lesson, Sodom, wicked before the Lord. We're going to look at what is sodomy, by the way. There's some misconceptions about that, too, according to the Bible. But why don't we start, and we'll eventually get to it. We're going to start this out in Genesis chapter 13. Genesis 13, we're going to read verse 2, then we're going to skip down to, we're going to skip down to verse 5. Abel was rich in cattle, silver, and in gold. So he had a lot of money, he was doing all right. Lot was too, and there started being some conflict between their, their employees, I would say, the people that there was their employees. I'll put it like that. Let's skip down to verse 5. Verse 5. Also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. You know, so the birth, they both had all this stuff and they were growing. It was too much. And the people that were that worked for them were you know, like getting into it about stuff. Let's just keep reading. Verse six. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen. Okay, there we go. There was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's, Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. So this is before Israel took over the land. This is when Abram and Lot were there. Abram's name wasn't even changed to Abraham yet. Verse 8. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. And between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I, then I will go to the left. So Abraham was like, well, Abram is saying, okay, Lot, look, we got to split up, man. But our herdsmen are getting into it. Our herdmen are getting into it. So if you want to go to the left side, you go to the left, I'll go that way. You go that way, then I'll go that way. But we got to split up. And, you know, so we, we're just growing too big all together at once. It's not working. All right. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, this is where we're getting into the lesson. This is before it was destroyed, but this is before it was actually destroyed. 
We're going to get into that in a minute. But it says here, verse 10, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zoar. So before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, there was water everywhere, right? And Lot was like, oh, this is like, like a nice place to live. Verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. So Lot was like, looks like a good place to live to me. I'm going to choose that. And Lot chose all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. And we're going to find out why, why did the Lord destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Why is the name of this lesson wicked before the Lord? We all know the answer to it, but we're going to go through the lesson anyway, right? Verse 13, verse 13. This is where the title comes from. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And that's where I got the title, Sodom, wicked before the Lord. Now let's find out why they were wicked before the Lord. Why does the Lord consider them wicked? All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. And we'll pick it up at verse one. We're going to read verses one through 10. Genesis chapter 19, verses one through 10, verse one. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, maybe that nighttime, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So Lot's hanging out in Sodom. That's where he went down to live, right? He's there, and he knows what's going on there. Verse 2, and he said, as Lot said to the angels, I don't know if he knows if they're angels or not, but this is what he said. And he said, behold, now my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. <laughs> All right. So verse three, and he pressed upon them greatly. So Lot was like, no, 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 no. Now y'all, y'all got to come into the career with me. I ain't going to stay out in the streets, in this side of streets all night. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. So it was like, all right, Lot, we'll go hang out with you for the evening. And he made them a feast and did bacon, leaven, bread, and they did eat. So Lot is eating with two angels. And they're eating, and I'm supposed to drinking too. He ain't made them a feast, right? So angels can eat. Verse four. But before they lay down, you know, before they went to bed, not went to sleep. Before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people, all the people from every quarter. Right? Verse five. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, what does this we may know them mean? That means that they want to have sex with these guys. That's what this means. No, it doesn't mean like, hey, we want to meet the, 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 the strangers that came into town. Hey, we brought some, uh, bring some bread and bring some cake for them. So a welcome gift for them. No, that's not what it means. No, and we're going to read some scripture about what, what that means. It means... They want to know them. That means they want to sleep with them. They want to have sex with them. These men of Sodom and all the people around about this king have sex with these two men. They think I'm men, but are angels. Verse six. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, brethren, do not so wickedly. So Lot knew right then that these men want to have sex with other men is something that's wicked. That's where the title comes from, Sodom, wicked before the Lord. That's where the term Sodomites come from. It's homosexuality. That's what it basically is. That's, that's what it is, according to the Bible. Sodomites, homosexuality. That's where the term Sodomites come from. It's from the town of Sodom. And we'll read a little bit more. Verse 8. Behold now, I have two daughters. Lot said he's got two daughters which have not known man, two virgin daughters. 
Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men, unto these men, do nothing. Take the women, leave the men. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So he's like, look, these two men came to my roof. I'm taking care of them. I got two daughters, women here. Do whatever you want to do to them, but don't do anything to these two men. Verse 9, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn. So he's like, this lot dude came and started, moved in on, into our city. And he will needs to be a judge. Now he's judging us? So, no, no that's, that's not judging them. According to the Bible, men are not supposed to lie with men. And we're going to read that too. Women are not supposed to lie with women. Either. That goes both ways, by the way. Verse, the middle of verse 9. And, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. So it's like, now, you know what, Lot? You're going to try to judge us? We're going to do worse with you. So now they're going to try and get Lot, right? Verse 10. But the men, the, the angels, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. So let's go and look and see what this... Um, we, that we may know them means. Just to make it, make it plain, according to the Bible, we may, so that we may know them means they want to have sex with them. That's what it means. So let's go to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. We'll pick it up in verse 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. One scripture, okay? Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, Adam knew, what did he say? Hey, Eve, hey, I know you. Then boom, she got pregnant. No, that's not how it happened. He had to sleep with her, right? He had to have sex with her in order for her to conceive to have, have Cain. That's what know you mean. Let's read it once more. Genesis chapter four, verse one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Let's go to Genesis chapter, chapter 4. Let's skip down to verse 25. Verse 25, Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again. Ah, he knew Eve a second time. Oh, you met somebody. How are you going to know him again? You might meet him again. You might see him again, but you know him. Would you forgot? And then you got to know him again? No. He had sex with her again. And Adam knew his wife again. And what happened? And she bare a son. So how is she bearing sons by saying, hey, hey, I knew you? We all know this, right? Just try to make it plain and make it obvious what this know you mean, which is what the men of Sodom were trying to do to these angels that they thought were men. 25 again, his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. It was Abel was already dead. For God said, she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom Cain slew. Okay. All right. Let's go one more place. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter one. Get this know you stuff out the way. Luke chapter one. We're going to read verses 30 through 34. Luke chapter one, verse 30. It's about Mary. Luke chapter 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto, them, unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So Mary had known anybody. She had known no man. So how is she going to have a son? How is she going to have a kid and conceive and have a kid if she hasn't known nobody? So now we understand what they want to know and mean. Of course we do. Let's go to um, one more place. I thought I, I thought I had enough of it, but I, I think I put one more here. In Numbers chapter 31. Verses 1 and 2, then we're going to skip down to verse um, 16. Numbers chapter 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites, 
Afterwards shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. So the Lord had a beef with Midian, the Midianites. You know, they were trying to kill the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. That's, that's a whole other lesson. But anyway, so the Lord said, go and go and smite the Midianites, basically what it is. And let's skip down to verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. Behold, these caused the children of Israel, the Midianites, caused the children of Israel through the council of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. So Balaam explained to the Midianites how they can get, how they can corrupt Israel. And they did so by giving them their women, basically. And they turned to other gods and they had idolatry. And then Eleazar took a spear and killed a couple of them, a couple of uh, an Israelite and a Midianite woman. And, um, they cut off all the heads of all the people. That, just, just go back and read it. Read the whole thing about the uh, Balaam and uh, and Peor and uh, how how the uh, how the women of Median turned the men of Israel into idolatry, and it caused the plague. And the Lord got upset about it and started killing the Israelites. So anyway, verse sixteen: Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Verse 17. Now, therefore, kill every male, kill every male among the little ones. That means kill the male babies, children, and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But uh, my point here was going to explain that when, when the, in the Bible it says he knew her, that means he had sex with her. Verse 18, but all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. So they killed all the Midianites, men and all the women that had sex with somebody, and they just kept all the women virgins for themselves. So what does known mean in the Bible? He knew her, she knew him. That means they had sex. It means I want to know you. Hey, baby, I want to know you. You know what that means now. So that's what the men of Sodom were saying to Lot to these men. We want to know these men. The men, Sodom, plain and simple, straightforward, right? But we already knew that. So just I'm just trying to like get rid of all of this little innuendos that people want to try and twist and turn to make it seem like something else. No, it's not something else. This is exactly what it's talking about. It's talking about homosexuality, and the Lord is against it once again. You can do whatever you want to do. I ain't got no fire to put you in or no heaven to put you in, no kingdom, no kingdom of God to put you in. But God gave everybody a choice. You do what his, what his word says or you don't. And they'll suffer the consequences at the end. You reap the rewards of your actions or your work at the end on the judgment. One of them from me. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 16 and People use this scripture too. People want to use this one to say that, see, it wasn't homosexuality that the Sodomites were doing. They were just proud, you know? All right, well, what do we got now today? We got the, the gay pride parade. It's pride right in the word. So even so, God's against that too. But anyway, it wasn't just pride. Let's go and read it. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Then we're going to skip down to verse 49 and 50. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is Ezekiel, son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. So the Lord says to Ezekiel, hey, Ezekiel, show these Israelites that are in Jerusalem what their abominations are. Now let's skip down to verse 49. All the way down to verse 49. Verse 49, we're going to read 49 to 50. Verse 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. We're talking about Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination. They had wrong. They had committed abomination before me, says the Lord. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. So, what's the abomination? It's the homosexuality that committed. It wasn't just the pride, and it wasn't just um, 
fullness of bread, abundance of idleness. Being idle is an abomination to the Lord. Uh, they have been an abomination before me. No, don't try and twist that to mean this one scripture here. You know, they did all this stuff too, but the main thing they did was they were wicked before the Lord because of their homosexual practices. That's according to the Bible, what the Bible says. Now, let's look up Sodom. Trusty, dusty, Merriam-Webster dictionary. And there was some stuff in this, in this uh in the definition of sodomy that I wasn't, uh, that I didn't know was in here. Anyway, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and I looked up sodomy. And the definition is anal or oral copulation with a member of the same or opposite sex. So it says any anal copulation or oral copulation is sodomy. I disagree with that according to the Bible. There's no talk about any type of anal or oral copulation. It's talk about men versus men, men with men and women with women. That's what the sin of Sodom was. And we're going to read in scripture how men and a woman cannot commit sodomy. You know, anal and oral sex is not sodomy. You know, homosexuality is. But okay, let's finish, the, uh, let's finish this uh, definition. Let's read that again. Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Sodomy anal or oral copulation with a member of the same or opposite sex. I disagree with that. Member of the same, okay. Opposite, no. Copulation with an animal. I didn't know that was any. I didn't know that was considered sodomy according to this dictionary. The Lord's against that too, by the way. I don't think he calls it sodomy, but it's in, it's in the Bible, nobody's sleeping with no animals. All right, continuing on with the definition. From the belief that the men of Sodom intention was to practice such intercourse on Lot's male guests, on Lot's male guests, in the biblical story of the destruction of Sodom, see Genesis chapter 18 and 19, and we read a little bit of that. So that's what, I agree with that definition right there. That's the one that's according to the Bible. From the belief, the belief that the men of Sodom's intention, now we read what, what getting to know you mean, right? So what this, this is, the kind of, this, this, uh, this tread lightly on this day, but come on. You got to call the spade a spade, right? Come on. All right. How come How come men and women together, sleeping together, can't commit sodomy? Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to read one verse. Hebrews chapter 13. And we're going to read one verse, verse 4. 13 verse 4. Oh, I'm in chapter 3rd John. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. And it says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So you marry your wife, a man marries a woman, a woman marries a man. That's what it's talking about, men and women. Marriage. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So no matter if you marry you and your spouse, your male and female marriage partners, Whatever you want to do, the bed is undefiled, according to the Bible. Continuing this scripture. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So you got to get a wife, men. And you got to get a husband, ladies. See? You can't just be fornicating. And you can't be committing adultery. You got to have your own spouse is what this is talking about. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. So regardless of what you want to do, you, you and your spouse are doing this between you two. Now, how do I know this is men and women marriage, not man, man, and woman, woman marriage? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. And we're going to read one verse. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. You knew I was going here, right? Yeah, y'all knew. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now, what was one of the what was the abomination back in Ezekiel? That they committed, they were haughty and committed an abomination before me that the Lord said in Ezekiel to tell them. Let's read that again. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. Read one verse. 
Verse 13, you know I was going here too, right? You know the stuff is in here. Everybody knows it, right? So why, why is everyone pretending that everything is okay? Well, if you're a Christian, you know it's not okay according to the Bible. But then again, maybe you don't, you know, maybe you don't. But like I said before, you can do what you want to do. This is what the Bible actually says. And we all know this, though, but I just want to make it clear. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, it means another man, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating anyone to go out there and kill anybody. No, no, no. You, um, the Lord's going to judge everybody at the end. So do what you want to do. You take your consequences at the end. Now, I'm not saying go out there and kill nobody, but this is how God feels about it. Back here in Leviticus, it was like, that's what they did. And I've been some other countries, not in the United States, well, maybe some people might take it upon themselves, and the, I'm not saying that. Some other countries, they probably still do it, but no, nah, I'm not saying that. The Lord is a judge. Everybody, in the, everybody is a sinner, right? So who are we as an individual human being to try and judge anybody? Judge not, lest she be judged. The Lord is the judge. We can just read what the book says and follow the instruction. Someone goes against that. You can say, you know, the book says this. You know, the book says that. Do this, don't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So you told them. Then they can do what they want to do and let the Lord be the judge. All right. So I'm not advocating going out there and taking vengeance on nobody. The Lord's the vengeance belongs to the Lord. That's another thing. All right. All right. Let's get it straight, man. Don't go out here, you know, causing no havoc on nothing. All right, let's go. First uh, Timothy chapter one. First, First Timothy chapter one, and we're going to talk about the law being against uh, homosexuality. First Timothy chapter one. We're going to read verses eight through ten. First Timothy chapter one, verse eight. Okay. This is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. But we know that the law is good. What law is he talking about? God's law, the Ten Commandments, the laws, the statutes, the statutes, and judgments, right? Verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless. So if you're a righteous person, you're already following on the law. So it's not made for you. Is made for the unrighteous to point out that that's going against what the law says. Do you get that? Verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind defile themselves with mankind. That means man sleeping with man or woman sleeping with woman. And we're going to, we're going to read in the scripture. We're going to go to another kind of Bible and read that one. For, verse 10, for, a whole, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for, man, for men stealing perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary, contrary to sound doctrine. Now, how do I know that this uh, File themselves with mankind means homosexuality. Well, let's go to let's go to the New King James Version Bible. I know no, you have to stick with the King James Version because it's clear enough. But this one, people might say, see what how you know what that means. Well, let's see what they interpreted in the New King James Version. Usually I like to stay with the King James Version, but just to clear some stuff up, you got some New Testament Christians out there, you got these liberal Democrats. We think that everything is okay, right? Everyone can do what they want to do. How do you know what that means? You got, we got a new Bible. We got our own Bible. Okay. New King James Version Bible. And we're going to read, um, we're going to read 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to read that scripture again, verses 8 through 10. Okay. Now we read it in the King James Version. And it said, 
men who defile themselves with mankind. New King James Version Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. Verse 8. But we know that the law is good, provided one uses it legitimately. We know that the law is not meant for a righteous person, but for the lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinful, for the unholy and irreverent, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral and homosexuals, for kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound teaching based on the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was entrusted to me. What did that say in this New King James Version Bible? The law is against the sexually immoral and homosexuals. Plain and simple in the New King James Version Bible. Let's go another place. Let's go to the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Holman Christian Standard Bible. Oh, you know what? I think I, was, I think that was the Holman Christian Standard Bible. <laughs> Let's go to the New King James Version Bible now. New King James Version. That was the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Let's go to the New King James Version Bible and read it there. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. Verse 8. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this. Made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate. For the ungodly, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites. Ah, sodomites and homosexuals, the same thing. Where did the term sodomite come from? From the men of Sodom. From Sodom, the town of Sodom. That's what it's named after. What is it known for? Homosexuality. And what is it? An abomination for the Lord. For kidnappers, for liars, for per any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Plain and simple. Anything that we all, everybody already knows. Everybody already knows this stuff, right? They just want to like fight against it. But there's like, there's like this. Yeah, it's, everything's, fine. everything's fine. No, it's not. No, it's not. Everyone is going against what the Bible says. And it's not just this. Everyone's doing everything against what the Bible says. There's like the whore mongers out there. That's against what the Bible says. There's adultery out there. That's against what the Bible says. There's murder out there. There's thieves out there. All that stuff is against what does say of the Lord. It's just another sin. But people don't treat it like one. That's the problem. People say, oh, that's okay. No, you're going to say, like, uh, he's a murderer. Oh, that's okay. No. And people do that, too, though. Anyway. Deuteronomy chapter 25. Deuteronomy. Back to the regular King James Version Bible, by the way. Deuteronomy chapter 25. And we're going to read verses 17 and 18. We just read in the New King James Version Bible that the Lord is against sodomites, right? Which means homosexuality. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 17 through 18. Verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So we read what sodomite is. Homosexuality. What's the Lord say clearly in Deuteronomy 23? No sodomites. Abomination. Verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. There it is again, an abomination. So if you're a whore and you go out there and you make some money from whoring, Lord doesn't want that in his in his in his tithe box. If you're it causes the sodomite here a dog. If you're a dog, or if you're a sodomite, if you're homosexuality, and you go out there selling yourself to another man, the Lord doesn't want that money in the tithe box. It's an abomination. First Corinthians chapter six. Uh, it's pretty clear, isn't it? According to what the Bible says. So you even got preachers out there saying, oh, they can do what they want to do. Preachers, preachers and reverend ministers marrying gay couples. Christian preacher and say it's okay when it clearly goes against what thus said the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6, 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, verse 9, King James Version Bible. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, we'll look up effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. There it is again, abusers of themselves with mankind. We know that means sodomy, sodomy that means homosexuality. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. See, all these things, won't, you're not going to get into the kingdom committing any of these things. So homosexuality is just another one of them. The God, all the rest of the commandments goes against it. So why is that one just being like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, it goes against what the book says. New King James Version Bible again. <laughs> New King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. This is the New King Bible. And it says, we're going to read six through, verse, chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Plain and simple in your new King James Version, Bible, doesn't say abuse themselves with mankind. It comes straight out and says homosexualities and sodomites. Same thing. Do you want to go to the home of Christian Bible and read it? Well, it's going to say the same things, all right? So let's go. Let's look up effeminate. Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and I looked up effeminate. We all know effeminate means like a, a man having feminine ways or acting like a woman, a man acting like a woman, basically. God is against that. Excuse me. Merriam-Webster Dictionary, effeminate, having feminine qualities. Untypical of a man, not manly in appearance or manner. That's what he feminine me. And how much how much is God against that? Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 22, one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So you're not even supposed to be wearing each other's clothes. It's not alone acting like one or the other. God is against that. So people say, well, hey, nah, maybe I was, they were just born that way. Well, what is your DNA? Your XX or your YY? And, and people that say, okay, well, people got different DNA. DNA has got mixed up. If they got like XX, okay, um, uh, do you have a menstrual cycle or do you produce sperm? I don't know anybody that, that do, does both. If that's something, then hey, I can't answer that. We got to ask God about that one. But according to what we read in this book, you're not even supposed to wear each other's clothes. Man not supposed to be wearing on a woman's clothes. Man not supposed to be putting on, not supposed to be putting on a dress. Woman not supposed to be wearing men. They make pants for women. They make women's pants. They make men's skirts. They do. They got a kilt. Tell it to the Irish and the, and the Scottish, right? But you're not supposed to wear a woman's garment. Can't be putting on, you know, you know what I'm saying? Not supposed to be dressing up like a woman or a woman not supposed to be dressing up like a man, all right? Last scripture. Let's go to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. We're going to read verses 18 through 32. It won't take long. This is, this is talking about, this is Paul writing a letter to the Romans. And it actually is saying, like, even people, if, if, you, if you are for things that are against the word of God, then you're just as guilty as they are, basically. So if you're, like, supporting, you're supporting things that are against what does say of the Lord. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So they know. This is what we're talking about preachers, really. So preachers, they know the truth. 
but they won't tell it either because they want to keep on getting the money or they know it's not what the congregation wants to hear or both. Right? But if they know it, they don't tell it, then God is they're supporting something that's against thus saith the Lord. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest, made obvious in them, for God have showed it unto them. So there are some people that God has shown this thing to, they know. People know, but they'll still come out and say, that's what thus saith the Lord said. They won't stand up for them. Maybe they're afraid. You know? Because they're going to be a big pushback from the media and all this stuff, right? Yeah, and it will be. Probably, depending on who they are, they're going to come down on them. But who are you going to stand up for? You're going to stand up for what does say of the Lord? You're going to stand up for God? Or are you going to like succumb to what man wants you to do? You're going to sell out. How much are you bought for? Are you you're selling out yourself to God? It's not just another person. You know, you're looking at the lake of fire versus getting into the kingdom of heaven. You know, verse twenty. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They're without excuse. 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. So they started making idols and making gods out of all kinds of stuff, all kinds of animals and stuff and worshiping that kind of stuff, right? Four, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to the side of their own bodies between themselves, who changed God into a lie. That's what you do. When you hold back the word of God, you change it to a lie. You're not saying, you're not helping nobody by letting them keep on doing the stuff that goes against the Lord. At least say something to them. You got to pick and choose who and tell you who you talk to. to. There's, a, there's a couple of Proverbs. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. It's like uh, uh, speaking to a fool unless you believe his foolishness. foolishness. Or and the, other one, the white after says, don't speak into a fool unless uh, he argues against you. Stuff like that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, paraphrasing. I don't have it exactly. I got to look it up. Maybe maybe when I do the edit, I'll go back and put those two scriptures in here in the edit for it. But um, yeah, you're not supposed to, if you know the truth and you see someone going against what the word says, you're supposed to tell them or say something, depending on when it is, What you got to get your timing right too. There's a time and place for everything. All right. 26, uh, 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature, that's man, more than the creator, that's God, who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So women with women now and men with men. 27, and likewise also the man leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, man with man working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Maybe that's what they got, a reprobate mind. Now, now they're condemned to the lake of fire. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, black backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. See, all this stuff. You get a reprobate mind, you go start doing all this wicked stuff, and you probably think you're still a good person. 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death? Not only do they do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 
So that's the lesson. Sodom, wicked before the Lord. We went through all the scriptures. Go back and take a look at it. Um, not trying to tell, not trying to judge anybody. Like I said before, God gave everybody a choice. He gave, he gave Cain a choice. Remember, before Cain, before Cain killed Abel, they both brought, they both brought what um, uh, an offering to the Lord. God accepted Abel's, but he didn't accept Cain's. You know, and then he told Cain, it's like, why are you, why is your countenance fell? You know, if you want, if you want to do good, do better. If you're not, then sin lies at the door. You got a choice. Pick one. And he chose sin. He chose it. So what's his thing going to be? And that's the same choice that everybody has. He's got these scriptures out here, his instructions. You can follow them or you don't have to follow them. It's your choice. And God's going to judge at the end. All right? Hey, just try to warn them from God. Saul, don't, don't shoot the messenger. Does say of the Lord. This is what the book says, okay? All right. Thanks for tuning in. I hope the lesson was uh, edifying. You know, like I said, I'm not trying to judge anybody or make any, you know, I'm just trying to say this is what the book says. Now you take take it take it right from right there, and you know, hopefully everyone repents and becomes obedient to what the Lord says. You know, all of us have been sinners. You know, and we've all done something. The book says there's no there's no person that's not been a sinner except for Jesus. He's the only one. So, hey, you got to repent get baptized, and start walking the straight and narrow, keeping the commandments of God. That's how you do it. Peace and grace to you and yours once again. In Jesus' name, amen.